What is up my good friends? I'm here today to do the underrated book tag. I'm in my kitchen at my apartment. As you can see, I haven't decorated yet, but I'm gonna do the underrated book tag because I feel like I read a lot of underrated books um, and I actually don't like a lot of really famous books like Where the Crawdogs Seen. I really didn't like that book and a bunch of other books and especially classics I really don't like. So I'm gonna talk about some underrated books. So I'm using my iPad. So one of your favorite books that you feel is underrated? That's the first question. And I just spoke about classics, but um, I'm gonna say Shakespeare is in a whole different league. He's not even like a classic, he's his own genre. So Richard II, I actually have a video I put on TikTok, so I'll put it right here. Very quickly, off the top of my head, I am going to try to name as many things as I can think of that would not have happened if Richard II hadn't been deposed. One, there would have been no War of the Roses because Henry Bolingbroke, later known as Henry IV, the first Lancastrian king, wouldn't have come to the throne. No War of the Roses means no Battle of Agincourt because there would be no Henry V. No Henry V means that the Hundred Years' War likely would have never ended and England probably would still speak French. So if the Hundred Years' War likely would have never ended, the War of the Roses would have never ended because it would have never happened. The Wars of the Roses never ending means there would have been no Henry VII, who's the first Tudor king. No Henry VII essentially means that Columbus never would have found America because Isabella and Ferdinand in 1492, the queens and queen of, uh, king and queen of Spain, wouldn't have ever made their throne secure because without Henry VII, there would have been no Prince Arthur for them to marry Catherine of Aragon to, who was their daughter. So had they not made that agreement, then they wouldn't have had the funds to promote Columbus. Columbus never sailing to America means that definitely things would be better for the Native Americans right now, I probably wouldn't be here in America. There would have been no Shakespeare to write about Richard II because Elizabeth I would never have been queen because there would have been no grandfather, Henry VII. How important this instance was in 1399 is so great because Richard II was the grandson of Edward III of whom's descendants made the War of the Roses. So essentially, this one moment in history caused the War of the Roses. So they cut the deposition scene for fear that it was treason to suggest how important this scene was because Elizabeth wouldn't have been on the throne. Elizabeth was the one who funded Shakespeare, so there wouldn't really have been Shakespeare because plays wouldn't have been popular because there was so much plague going around London at the time. And they actually shut the theaters down for a moment, but they reopened them because Elizabeth loved them so much. This is such an important moment. It was 1399, right at the end of the Middle Ages, after the Black Death, if Richard II was a better king, if he had produced offspring, if his father, Edward the Black Prince, hadn't have died before him, needless to say, things would be much different. This play was adapted for The Hollow Crown a few years ago, and that's actually where I first saw it and then I read it. I don't think The Hollow Crown is really the best uh, presentation of it. It doesn't have the best visuals, and you really, really need good visuals to like pump up that script. But David Tennant played Richard II, in the Royal Shakespeare Company, and he is awesome. Um, so Richard II follows the deposition of uh, King Richard II and the rise of Bolingbroke. Now, as I said in my video, had Richard II not been deposed, we wouldn't have had a Queen Elizabeth. We wouldn't have had a Shakespeare. So this event in 1399 is actually a very underrated event in history. Um, I encourage you to go look into it. I gave you a little bit of information on it. So we are gonna turn to question two, and that is if you could pick any underrated book to turn into a movie, what would it be? And the answer here is Challenger Deep by uh, Neil Schusterman. This is about a 15 year old boy who um, is in a mental hospital because he's recently been diagnosed with schizophrenia and it's about his hallucinations and how it, the hallucinations are woven in with reality. 
and I think it has some really good visuals in there that you could bring forward on screen and in my opinion I was very mentally ill when I was a teenager that is the best depiction of a teenager with mental illness in all of literature number three a famous author you feel is not very well known so I'm gonna say Emma Donahue um, she has written one well-known book and one screenplay. She wrote Room and she actually won, um, I think a Booker Prize for Room about uh, the woman who's trapped in a room for like 15 years or something. I don't know, I haven't read it. I haven't really seen the movie either, but um, she won, I think the Booker Prize for that. And she also, um, her screenplay won Best Adaptive Screenplay. I need to watch that movie. I used to really, really like Brie Larson, but now I don't like her anymore because I know more about her and she's very arrogant and rude, but she's a very, very talented actress. So I'm going to say Emma Donahue, the best book she's ever written, I will talk about in a moment. If you could only promote one book to make it well known to everyone, what would it be? Share Me and Major Whittlesey. Now this is a book about, it's, it's multiple point of view. It's about a major in World War II and also about a carrier pigeon that is alive and dead. She's conscious in the Smithsonian. And this is not a children's book. This is an adult, a very adult book, by the way, about a gay major in the army and a gay pigeon in the army. And um, it really shows the devastation World War I had on Americans. America is very left out when we talk about World War I, but we basically saved the free world in that war. I don't think it would have really ever ended if America hadn't gotten involved. And the devastation on not only civilians, because a lot of Americans back then were actually immigrants, and the xenophobia was terrible. And remember, this is also the time of the Spanish flu. So there's a very notorious incident that happened in Philadelphia where there was a big Liberty rally, which was like a war rally to raise money and buy, help us win the war. Well, that was probably the biggest super spreader event in the history of forever. And tons of people ended up contracting Spanish flu and dying because they felt the need to be patriotic and go to this war because there was so much persecution of uh, immigrants back in the day. So I think Share Me and Major Riddle Z not only is it extremely original and that it's an adult book written from a gay pigeon's point of view, like half of it's from the pigeon, half of it's from the major. Not only that, but it, the originality and the realness to the time period are what make it great. So now we're gonna go to number five. My favorite character in an underrated book. I'm gonna say Nurse Julia from The Pull of the Stars. Nurse Julia, um, The Pull of the Stars is an LGBT book about Spanish flu. In um, Ireland, it's a nurse. Ju Julia is a nurse in a maternity ward that is being ravished by the Spanish flu. And it's about her react actions with a doctor who was a female doctor at that time, a volunteer and the patients. And it's incredibly, incredibly heart-wrenching. It's got a beautiful love story. It's very literary and it's written by Emma Donahue. Moving on, in what bookstore, oh wait, no, sorry, wrong one. What book series do you think is underrated? Unwind by Neil Schusterman. Unwind, the original book, came out in like 2007, and I've talked about the series before in one of my videos it, that I said I was going to finish the series uh, by the end of the year, and I did. I finished it. I read all the books. It's about how children, bad kids, abortion has been uh, revoked in the United States, all states, federally. You cannot get an abortion in the United States. So retroactively, parents can ab abort their children um, through what's called unwinding. And they can abort their child where they take like a bad kid and abort them. They unwind them, they take all their body parts and give it to someone in need. And it's about these three unwind children and how they try to save their lives. 
It has a very, very atheistic point of view, which I love. I'm an atheist, obviously. And its critiques of religion are very respectful and not personal. Its critique of American government is um, intense and intentional and wonderful. And this book is wonderful. How many times have I said wonderful? Go read Unwind. The characters are okay in the first book. Like they're just very typical, like YA protagonist type characters, but the social commentary it provides and how the characters progress throughout the series, there's five books, is wonderful. All right, moving on, number seven. In what bookstore have you found your most underrated books? So this is definitely, I've definitely found my most underrated books in the Kindle store. So I read digitally a lot because I don't have a lot of space. And the Kindle store and also Kindle Unlimited, which I recently signed up for, that's actually where I found the comic Mouse Guard, which I love. See the rodent book tag. All right. If you could turn one not so well-known character into a real life celebrity, who would it be? So I'm gonna say Maud from the Century Trilogy novels. Maud is a fictional socialite. Her, she marries like a German guy and they're like the star-crossed lovers in World War One. It's dumb. But first of all, Maud is hilarious. She very, she's a very, uh, sexually experienced we'll say and i could totally see her being some kind of like lifestyle blogger like this is how you give a hand job to your man at the opera i mean come on it's awesome i love this woman she falls in love in the second book it's a trilogy she falls in love she's like 55 years old and falls in love with like a 21 year old nazi and this woman this woman all right so do you like to share underrated books or keep them secret uh, share, I'm on booktube, duh, and I'm doing the booktube underrated tag, share. All right, number 10 is tag somebody. If you're watching this, I tag you because I don't have that many viewers, but I don't do this for the views. I do it for fun and I do it so I can talk about books. So that's all for me. Keep reading, keep writing, keep loving words, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.